hot hatchbacks. They are some of the most exciting vehicles out there. And for those of you that want a sports car but want to be just a little bit more practical, they are the go-to answer. And they're really, really fun. But with Ford getting rid of vehicles like the Focus ST, the Fiesta ST, the Focus RS, some of the most exciting and fun hatchbacks that have ever been on the market, you're left with vehicles like the Civic Type R, the Golf GTI, the Subaru WRX. All fantastic cars, but they're all very, very refined vehicles. So for those of you that want something that's a little bit more of a hooligan, you really have nowhere to go, at least until now. So yes, Hyundai has gone and made a hot hatchback, and it is a pretty good one, if I do say so myself. Uh, if you guys have never heard of the Veloster N, basically to sum up this car, Hyundai snatched up Albert Bierman, who used to be the head engineer for BMW's M division, and he now works for Hyundai Kia. He made the Kia Stinger GT. He made the Hyundai i30N, which is essentially the same car as this, though we don't get that hatchback version in the United States. Instead, we get this hatchback, which is the Veloster in. Now, personally, I like the Veloster. I like the funkiness of this car, and I just think it's an incredible little package that Hyundai was able to come up with here. Now, obviously, this vehicle is in a very weird position. Uh, a lot of people think it competes against the Type R, the Focus RS, vehicles like that. That is not the case. As a matter of fact, this is basically Hyundai's ST of the lineup. So it competes with vehicles like the Focus ST, though that car is no longer on sale. It competes with the Volkswagen GTI and the Subaru WRX, the non-STI version. This puts out actually more power than all of them, and it has, I would say, the most hardcore driving dynamics of the current three that are on sale. Now, starting with the color of my tester, this is called Chalk White, and it basically looks just like Porsche's chalk color. It's like an off grayish white color. I think it looks great, though in some lights, this does look like the performance blue color that Hyundai debuted this car in. So another thing to note is my tester has the performance package, which is gonna bump the horsepower up to 275. And because of that though, you're talking about an almost $30,000 vehicle. Well, as a matter of fact, it is $30,000. You guys can see the exact MSRP right here at the bottom of the screen. So that is a lot of money for a Hyundai hatchback, but I would say you're probably getting some of the most hardcore driving dynamics in its specific segment. Now coming to the front of the Veloster N, you do have these unique red accents coming right here. And of course the whole front end is gonna be unique to the N version. So you've got this really big honeycomb grill. Have your N badge there, your Hyundai badge. Now one thing I wanna point out that I was actually surprised by, you guys see these little guys here, here, and then all of this right there. I thought those were actually functional little areas where air can pass through and that is not the case. So coming here, you guys can see it's just black plastic and then right here it's more black plastic so nothing can go through there. But this area under here is going to be functional right under here. And then of course you have a functional area there that's going to send air around the outside of the car, around the wheel, down the body and it's going to come to this little rocker panel right here which is going to have your N logo on it as well. And that is actually going to be functional as well. So you guys can see that right there. So it is a functional piece. So though there are some areas that are not functional, you do have some that are functional. One other one that isn't functional is actually gonna be this here. So yeah, a little disappointed with that, but once again, it's a $30,000 hatchback, so you can't be too upset. Now you do have LED lights on here, so you have LED daytime running lights, LED low beams, but your high beams and your turn signals are going to be non-LEDs, so you do have that there. Now coming to the wheels, you have 19 inch wheels on here. Uh, they have like a black machine finish to them. I think they look great. And then hiding behind there, you have your in-branded brake calipers, which is really cool. All this is gonna be wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires. They're 235, 35s, front and rear. 
so you're going to have the same setup front, same setup in the rear. Now one thing I do like about the wheels, I think it makes the car look great, especially from a profile look. I just think it's an awesome looking vehicle and then you have more of that red accenting coming back here. I also love these lines on the car. I just, I just think it looks really, really nice. It makes the car look very aggressive. And then you've got this spoiler here, which has sort of like a faux carbon fiber on it. So you guys can see that there. And so you can see air is going to pass through here. It's going to push down on basically this part of the car, and then it's going to push down here. So you have like two layers, essentially, that air is going to be pushing down on. Works like a typical spoiler, so nothing super fancy there. But I have to say my favorite part about this car is the rear end of it. I just like how everything is so kind of tight and small in the back. Um, it looks really good. Now one thing I do like is the tail lamps. First of all, the tail lamps remind me of like a Ventador tail lamps. I think they look great. And then on the side, it actually says Veloster, which is kind of a little Easter egg that's in there. I think that was pretty neat. And also you have your third brake light right up here, which is specific to the end model. And I think that looks super cool. Your end badge right over here. Sorry, the car's a little dirty. Lost her there. You do have these fake little areas here, so those are not going to be functional in any way. But then you have this blacked out area with more of that red accenting. You've got these massive exhaust tips, which sound incredible, which is the number one thing that everyone wants to know about this car is how it sounds. It is just all over the internet, crazy pops, all that crazy stuff. So let's go ahead and take a listen to it. So yeah, this car sounds awesome. But getting into the Veloster Inn, here is your key, which is a nice looking key. It's got the Inn badge there on the back, your Hyundai badge. Um, and it's very high quality. It's got a nice heavy feel to it. You have your lock, your unlock, and then you have your trunk release and your panic button right there. And then you actually have a key in the bottom. You pull that out and you can get into the car if the battery on your key dies or if the battery on the car dies and you can get your belongings out, all that good stuff. You also have buttons here on the door, so if we walk up to the door, you guys can see the little black button right there. You push that, one beep means it's locked, and then two beeps means it's unlocked. All right, so coming to the inside of the Veloster Inn. So starting with this door, this entire thing is hard plastic. Let me bring it closer so I can show you guys. It's all hard plastic. Even this area where you rest your arm is like barely soft. It's just soft enough to where I don't know. I still think it feels hard, but uh, yeah, it's just a little bit softer, but you really don't notice it when you rest your arm on it. It still feels like hard plastic. Um, all of your window controls. So it is funny because this is a three door design. You have one window in the back and then two up front. You're also going to have your door locks, mirror controls, everything like that. Now you do have an infinity sound system. So you guys can see your speaker right here. Infinity sound system, which is signature to Hyundai. It's a really good sound system. Sounds pretty decent. Uh, you're going to have your in branded door seal right here, which has this nice brushed aluminum look. We'll get a little bit closer so you guys can see that. But it's pretty high quality and it looks really nice. Uh, the other thing that's really nice are these pedals. I mean, the pedals on here look fantastic. They feel fantastic. And yeah, they just do an overall good job. You also have a little badge here on the floor that says in and it's literally like a big thick badge it's on there pretty good uh, it does hurt your heart a little bit when it gets dirty but once you clean it up and shine it up it's just a pretty cool little feature I do like that quite a bit 
All right, so before I shut the door, um, just to remind you guys, the Veloster does have one door on this side, two doors on this side, and it just makes it a little bit more practical if you are doing like curbside. So at least here in the US, most of our curbs are on the right side, so that's why you have your second door on the right side to get in and out if you have kids or you're doing curbside pickup or anything like that. So let's go ahead and shut the door. Pretty nice and solid door shut. A quick look at the inside. And now push start is standard, obviously. Foot in on the clutch. Nice. So starting with the steering wheel. Now you do have a pretty good size steering wheel here. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer so you guys can see here. You have this blue stitching. It does have perforated leather here, smooth leather here, and the perforations are gonna run all along the side of the steering wheel up into this really nice grip extension here. It's very, very thick, and you guys can see it's got a real solid feel to it. Um, I do also love this area. It's like kind of like a dark chrome, and it comes all the way down into your in, bad, in badge right here. And yeah, it's just an overall really good steering wheel. It looks really sleek, um, but it looks nice and like chunky at the same time. I really like it. Now over to the left, you have all of your media controls, so your volume, previous next, voice commands, different modes, AM, FM, XM, all that good stuff volume and then your drive mode so these are going to be your non in drive mode so if I zoom in here and I hit that button you have sport eco and normal and then this screen is going to change accordingly so normal sport and then eco now your exhaust does change between normal sport and then of course between eco and sport so if I open the door a little bit we're gonna throw her into eco give it some revs so you guys can hear it's a little bit quieter. Um, if I switch it to sport. And then once you click this guy right here, that will throw you into in mode. So you have in mode, that shows up here on the screen. You click it one more time, you go into in custom, which has been my best friend this entire time. I'm not gonna lie, in mode rides very, very rough. Like almost focus RS, if not a little bit worse, rough. Like it's pretty, pretty bad for the street. So in custom, you can go through here, click your in mode, and click custom. And I can go through, adjust my engine, my rev matching, my electronic limited slip diff, my exhaust. So I have everything in its sportiest setting until I go to my chassis and my suspension, I have it in its softest setting. But these three are still gonna be firmer than your sport mode over here, just to give you guys an idea. Sport plus is way too much for the road. Sport is even just a little bit too much. Um, normal for me is just perfect with everything else being in its sportiest setting. And then of course you have your steering feel and then your elect or I'm sorry your uh, traction control right here. So normal you have sport and then you have just completely off. So yeah let's go ahead and give it some revs in in mode. And you guys can see these lights here at the top. Yeah, that sounds absolutely amazing. But as far as the gauge cluster, it's very simplistic. Uh, the only unique thing is you have your in badge here and the font and everything is slightly different. And then you have the screen here in the middle. So let me shut my door. And you have things like your G meter and I can use these buttons here to the right which I didn't go over these yet, but it's cruise control. You do have rough matching, which you can turn on and off. And so for your custom settings, you have to go into your settings and actually do it. So if I slip switch to normal in mode, then I can press the rev button and it'll turn it on and off. And you can do rev matching in every mode except for eco mode, just so you guys know. So once again, G meter, I can go through my oil temp, my lap timer. Uh, and if I hit this button right here, that will take me through my different menus, my fuel economy, average fuel economy, 18.4. Not terrible, but I have been driving this thing like, well, like how you're supposed to drive it. <laughs> and then, yeah, so very simplistic, very easy to use, and everything's very easy to read, nice and crisp. So, looks great. All right, one last thing, guys. So, for those of y'all who want to know, I just drove this car on about an 84-mile trip, and I averaged 25.9 
miles per gallon. Now behind the steering wheel, you are going to have automatic lights. Once again, you don't have fog lights or anything like that. On the right, you have all of your wipers. One thing I do like is when you switch up and down, it tells you exactly where your wipers are. And same thing even with the one on the rear. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now over here, you only have one button, which is going to be your interior illumination. More lovely hard plastic all on the dash. There's not a soft surface in here except for the steering wheel and the shifter. Now, your screen is gonna be your traditional like standing up screen like everyone's going to nowadays. Works very well, so all the feedback is pretty good. You do have Apple CarPlay on here as well, so as you guys can see here, Apple CarPlay, working strong, hazards, all of your corresponding buttons here. You do have this performance blue um, detail coming around here. More of it coming right here. AC controls, you don't have dual zone climate control, you don't have heated seats, you don't have anything like that. It's basically just a standard, basic Veloster. Uh, you have a 12 volt, going to have a USB here, which I do have my GoPro plugged into. Auxiliary, another USB over here to the right. And a decent sized area here, so I have my phone, I have a small iPhone, little SE, and then I have my GoPro here, and it fits both, no problem. It's got a soft padding so everything doesn't fly around. And you also have traction control here, so you can turn it off here if you don't want to go through your screens and do all that. Lots of blank buttons. Now, the shift boot on here is nice. It's got some blue stitching, uh, nice leather, and then it even has perforated leather here on the outside, which feels nice, and then this nice metal piece around here, and then your blue accent here on the back. In badge there, and the gears are nice. It feels nice to just shift through everything. And I will say, this had the easiest learning curve out of any shifter I have used in like the past two years. It's extremely easy to drive. Backup camera, which is pretty meh quality, but um, I feel like I'm just spoiled with some of the cars that I drive. And yeah, I feel like that should be something that's easy to fix, but for a lot of people, I guess that is not the case. Uh, coming back here, cup holders. They're fine, they don't get in the way. Uh, if you have a big drink right here, it can get in the way slightly, but you just have to raise your arm a little bit and then sort of adjust accordingly. Parking brake, which is nice, you still have a manual parking brake. Once again, this area, pretty hard. It's got a little bit of give to it, as you guys can see there. Lift that up, you have a decent amount of storage space, but you don't have any USB auxiliary, anything like that. Now coming to the seat design, it's a really nice seat design. Um, I love that you have your in badge here. Your blue stitching on there looks really nice. It has decent bolstering. The material though is a little on the firm and hard side. So they're not the most comfortable and obviously I love the blue seat belts. Definitely a cool touch. Uh, but yeah, the fabric isn't the most comfortable. Even in the middle, it's just got some really good firmness to it. But, um, you know, this is an in model so it's not supposed to be the most comfortable vehicle. Storage space in here. Your mirror. Doesn't have auto dimming or anything like that, but you do have SOS and then like road hazard stuff. Sunglass holder, your lights, which are not gonna be LEDs, but they are very bright. Your vanity mirror with your light up here. Card holder. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the interior, or at least the front of the car. Let's go ahead and hop in the back and see the room. Ooh. Okay, so coming to the back seat of the Veloster Inn. Now, first of all, I'm six feet tall. I set this seat to my position. I like don't fit back here. It's really, really tight. Um, as you guys can see, first of all, getting in, there's a very low area right here that you have to duck underneath. And on top of being six feet tall, I have like really big hair. So if I get in here, I'm like basically hunched over just a little bit. Um, my feet room is fine. Uh, if the person in front of me was a little bit shorter, my knee room would be fine, but my biggest issue is headroom. I have zero headroom. As a matter of fact, I can't even put my head all the way straight up. So definitely if you're over six feet tall, the back seat is not an area you're gonna be able to sit in. Now, if I move over to the side, you guys can see you do have two cup holders right here. Um, you're also gonna have a little area to put stuff in. You can also fold the seats down back here. But other than that, there's literally nothing else to go over. There's no ports, there's no 12 volts, 
There's no handles. There's nothing back here to like put your dry cleaning on. Uh, you do have these cool blue seat belts, which are always a big plus to have colored seat belts. But yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and check out the trunk and see the space. All right, so to get into the back of the Veloster Inn, it's very simple. You guys see this thing right here? You're gonna put your finger underneath that and there's a little button right under here. And that's going to open the hatch. Now, the good thing is that the hatch does open very wide. Now, I can show you guys here. It doesn't look very wide from where I'm standing because I'm on a curb and obviously I'm a little bit higher. But it does open very wide. It's very easy to get in. And it also has this really, like, tall lip here. So if you have things that are going to fly backwards or if you're on a really steep hill, you don't ever have to worry about that. But I've got tons of stuff in here. My backpack. I've got one of my old gimbals in there. I've got my Bible because Jesus. And... Yeah, lift this up. You've got extra storage space under there and a fixed flat. There we go. But you don't have a spare, obviously, because you have your fixed flat kit there. And you can pull the seats down, like I said earlier. Uh, and here is my Sam's Run with the seats folded down. As you guys can see, I was able to fit a ton of things in here. Um, I did have to remove this cargo cover. Um, you know, cargo covers are great. I just, they just get in the way sometimes. That's the only negative part about them. If you're making really big trips like that, uh, you do always have to take it out for the most part. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the trunk space. Let's go ahead, check under the hood, see what's under there. All right, so coming under the hood of the Veloster Inn, you're going to have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's actually borrowed from the Hyundai Sonata, although this one, of course, has been upgraded and beefed up to handle the extra power. So if you don't get the performance package, you're gonna get 250 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. But because we do have the performance package, it's 275 horsepower, the same 260 pound-feet of torque. Now all that is, of course, going to the front wheels only through a six-speed manual transmission. That is the only transmission you can get. So if you want an automatic, then the GTI or WRX are going to be your only options. But this only comes in a six-speed manual. And this is all pushing around a vehicle that weighs roughly 3,100 pounds. So it's actually decently light for how porky the car looks. It does look very wide. It does look very round and bubbly and big. But um, it actually doesn't weigh that much. Now, because this is a twin scroll turbo, you guys can even see the turbo tucked in right over here. See that there? But because the turbo is like literally right next to the intake, it spools up extremely fast, which is definitely what you want whenever you're talking about a performance vehicle. But if you guys are also interested in fuel economy figures, you guys can see the fuel economy specs right here but I'm super excited to get it on the road. So let's go ahead and get driving. What is up you guys? So driving the 2019 Hyundai Veloster in now. I have it in just its normal drive mode. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it to in because I want you guys to see just how bumpy this thing is. So ready, normal mode. I'm gonna switch it to in. So you guys can already see how much bumpier it got and I'm on a pretty smooth road right here. Um, and it's just bouncing me up and down. It's like I'm on a pogo stick. And then if I switch it back to normal, it's so smooth. It's crazy. And, you know, obviously this is supposed to be a car that's designed for the track. But having just got out of the McLaren 570S and the Audi RS5 Sportback, I can honestly say there's no reason for this car to ride as stiff as it is. Um, you know, once again, that's just me, but you guys will definitely experience it for yourself if you decide to take this thing out for a test drive. Now, that's when I go into In Custom. So once you go into In Custom, it's firm, but it's definitely bearable. And that's my favorite mode, which I just switched it to right now. So then, in, in custom, it's just so good. <laughs> and man, this thing will go. I will say though, that, okay, it's 37 degrees right now and it's been this way mostly all week. So the tires aren't gripping very well, which means I'm getting a good amount of wheel spin and it's not really putting the power down very well in first gear. Once you're in gear in like second or third and then you just lay into it, it will just 
go. It will seriously put you back into your seat. So for example, I am, let's see, in third gear right now. I'm gonna downshift it in a second. And I'm gonna get on it. <laughs> it will move, guys, I'm telling you. It's pretty impressive. Okay, so one thing I have not heard any other reviewer talk about is the torque steer in this thing. I mean, how can you just ignore the fact that this has like almost Mazda Speed 3 levels of torque steer? I'm not joking. When I drive this car really, really quick, I have to make sure I always have both hands on the wheel because it will dart me left and right. It's pretty nuts. So I'm going to switch to my head mount so I can show you guys just how bad this torque steer is. All right, so I'm in first gear and let me get somewhere where I'm not going to run into someone else. And I'm just going to lay into it, ready? <laughs> yeah, it's got a good amount of torque steer. It's, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Now, I may have exaggerated when I said Mazda Speed 3 levels of torque steer, but it's definitely there and it's definitely noticeable for sure. Well, since I have the head strap on, what do you guys say we do some driving? So Hyundai says this will do 60 in 6.1 seconds. Uh, let's see what we can do. Veloster in just to give you guys an idea of how much it's going to cost. So let's see here 93 octane, two dollars and three thirty cents about. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that. All right, so just got done and it was twenty five dollars and ninety two cents. That's actually not bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap her up. Let's see what full range is. Just out of curiosity. So, on a full tank, let me shut this door. 324 miles of range on a full tank. And that's me driving, not economically. So that's actually pretty decent. All right, so one last thing about the driving experience. It rained about two days during my time with the car and it drove incredibly well and incredibly stable on wet roads. But let's go ahead and see what this thing looks like at night and wrap this video up. All right, you guys, so to end the video, here is the Veloster Inn at night, and this thing looks incredible.
that is going to wrap up my review of the 2019 Hyundai Veloster N. I thoroughly enjoyed my week with this car and if you guys are looking for a hatchback that is just dripping with fun, this is the one to get guys. It is so entertaining and I guarantee you it will put a massive smile on your face every time you get behind the wheel. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe below, hit the bell so you never miss an upload. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next video.